Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. And uh, so today I'm going to be telling you about more exogenous material on Bennu that we have discovered by using the MapCam and PolyCam images on OSIRIS-REx. And this is work in collaboration with Ari Tatsumi, Mar Marcel Popescu, Juan Luis Rizos, Amy Simon, Hannah Kaplan, uh, Danny de la Justina, Julia de Leon, Javier Ricandro, and Dante Loretta. And here's a quick outline of my talk. I'm going to be giving you a little bit of, uh, of uh, background on the material that has already been published, reporting exogenous material on Bennu by De La Justina et al. 2021 and by Tatsumi et al. 2021 on Ryugu. Um, uh, the new candidate, uh, then I'm going to be telling you more about the new candidate exogenous material that we have identified on Bennu. So in addition to the six uh, exogenous boulders that were uh, identified by De La Justina at all 2021. We have 70, 71 additional boulders uh, identified because of their red slope and absorption near 0.9 microns uh, using MapCam uh, colors. And we, we find that there are at least two compositional types, one that is consistent with uh, mixing HED material with the average Bennu material, and the other one that is consistent with mixing ordinary chondrite type material with the average Bennu material. And then I'll tell you a little bit about the conclusions. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, De La Justina et al. 2021 used albedo color and spectra of six bright boulders on uh, Bennu uh, that were very distinct from the rest of the surface and that are likely basaltic material specifically from Vesta. And then uh, Tatsumi et al. Uh, 2021 identified bright boulders on Ryugu that show absorptions near one micron, but not near two microns, suggestive of olivine-rich anhydrosilicates consistent with ordinary chondrite material. And... Um, so here are the six boulders identified by De La Justina et al. 2021 uh, on Bennu. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go too much into this, uh, but I will tell you more about what we've done. So since that publication, we have identified 77 bright boulders on Bennu using the MapCam and um, uh, PolyCam images. And these have red spectral slopes, and the average Bennu has a blue spectral slope. And these also have significant uh, X band, uh, which is uh, uh, centered at 0.85 microns absorptions. And so our 77 uh, boulders that we identified include the six that had been identified previously by De La Justina et al. And we find that these are scattered throughout the surface. We limited ourselves to latitudes below uh, plus and minus 70 uh, degrees on the surface of Bennu. So here's the plot on the latitude longitude. And the next one is a plot on the actual global map of Bennu. Um, and our exogenous candidates tend to be in areas with larger, larger average size. So, um, but with that's just part of the preliminary results. Uh, here are some images of our boulders. So we find them either as single homogeneous boulders like this one. We find them as pieces of a larger boulder. And we also find them as breccia type material on that are you know basically bright uh, objects uh, encrusted into a matrix of darker Bennu-like material, Bennu average Bennu-like material. Um, so, um, we find no correlation with uh, morphology between morphology and spectra, uh, but we do find two distinct spectral mixing trends with respect to average Bennu. One of them can be explained by mixing HEDs and VESTA material uh, 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 suggested by De La Justina et al. 2021, and the other one by mixing uh, the average Bennu with olivine-rich and hydrous silicates so uh, this, th those may explain these at least two different uh, compositions of the exogenous material that we have identified. Um, in addition, the near infrared spectra uh, using the OVIRS uh, instrument on OSIRIS-REx also support multiple compositions among the exogenic objects on Bennu. 
So we have both color and spectral evidence of more than one composition of the exogenous material on Benno. Now the comparison with Ryugu, which was done very nicely by Tatsumi et al. 2021, indicates that Benno is about 40% more abundant in exogenous material, I mean, not 40%, 40 times more abundant in exogenous material than Ryugu. And so this likely reflects differences in impactor velocity, size, composition, the environment in which the, uh, the collisional evolution of these two objects occurred. So the exogenous material can constrain the collisional history of each of these two objects. So uh, in conclusion, we have exogenous material ha that has been identified from both Bennu and Ryugu. And we have done in this work, further analysis on Benno using MapCam and PolyCam images. And we found a wider diversity and many more uh, examples of this exogenous material. That, so we are expanding on the findings of Della Justina et al. 2021. We continue our study of this diverse material on Benno and Rigo to constrain their origin, their evolution, and their collisional history. Um, remember that the average uh, collisional uh, velocity in the asteroid belt is supposed to be, it is five kilometers per second, and the outcomes of such collisions would not leave any of the impactors uh, surviving. So we, there's, there's something that we're missing in our models of collisional uh, evolution of these objects. And also that the return samples could contain the exogenous material. So we are excited about having samples, not just from Ryugu and Bennu, but from, from these exogenous materials that are on them. Thank you. I'll take any questions. All right. Thank you so much, Umberto. Um, yeah. So if anybody has a question, please feel free to type it into the chat box. Um, I had a, a question. So in Joe's talk, um, he had mentioned that these boulders didn't have a crater associated with them and that they were sort of brought up from the surface. So. Are these exogenous materials thought to be delivered by an impactor or some other process? Definitely impacts. And uh, it is not clear, uh, as discussed in both the De La Justina et al. and the uh, Tatsumi et al. papers of 2021, it is not clear if the impacts occurred on uh, Benu and Rigo. It is more likely that they occurred on their parent body. So um, that is much more likely to yield the survivability of these large boulders. Good question, thank you. Okay, we have a question in the chat from Antara and they ask, are the spectral signals of exogenous materials similar? Are there predictions for the composition of these materials? They're, they, they're different. Uh, based on just the colors, which is what we've done, uh, it, it's clear that there are two trends. One, which would be mixing average Bennu material with HED meteorites or with Vesta uh, type material. And the other one would be with ordinary chondrite meteorites. And it's interesting that on Ryugu, there they have found no evidence of Vesta-like material. So Bennu and Ryugu are different. Bennu contains Vesta-like material and uh, ordinary, ordinary chondrite-like material on the surface. Ryugu contains only ordinary chondrite-like material on the surface as exogenous, but we are, uh, this is only our, our second phase. First was the discovery. This is our second phase of our study of these objects. We're gonna be doing a lot more and hopefully identifying more details about that diversity. But on Bennu, at least two types of exogenous material uh, are, have been identified. Okay, great. 